Hello everybody and welcome back to our channel. My name is Turo. And my name is Brandon. And we are BNT Reacts. And today we are checking out the 2023 Met Gala was unbelievably boring <gasps> with some emojis, parentheses, Met Gala 2023 review. And this is by Modern Girl. Definitely it's supposed to check this out and see why it was so boring. Why did y'all think it was boring? I, I didn't know. even know what happened. I, I just saw been. people being like, this is such a day. I, I just saw know. people being like, this outfit's bad, this was stupid. Yeah, I don't really keep up with a lot of things. I don't either. I'm not, I'm not a fashion user myself, so I don't really keep up. <laughs> anyway, though, we're gonna check out this video. Let's get into it. Let's go. The 2023 Met Gala was unbelievably boring. Mm. Although the famous and fashionable have been attending the Met Gala for decades at this point, it's only in more recent years that it's become a worldwide phenomenon. Traditionally held on the first Monday of May, the Met Gala marks the opening of the Costume Institute's annual fashion exhibit at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Established back in 1948, the fundraising event has become one of the highlights of the New York City social scene, in large part because of ex-editor-in-chief for American Vogue, Diana Vreeland, who became a consultant for the Costume Institute in 1971. Prior to that point, the Met Gala had been largely attended by New York High Society and the creme de la creme of the fashion industry. But during her tenure, Vreeland began inviting celebrities, which yes, raised Diane. the event's prestige and set the foundation for the spectacle it is today. Besides moving the gala to the Metropolitan Museum yeah, permanently, cool. Vreeland also introduced themes in 1973, with said themes relating to that year's exhibit. Although not technically mandatory, guests of the gala were expected to dress the part, something that has proven to be difficult even mm. 50 years later. Current American Vogue editor-in-chief Anna Wintour has overseen the Met Gala since 1995, becoming the final say on everything from the theme to the guest list to the food, and it has since become one of the most exclusive events in the world. 2023 especially, as Wintour reportedly cracked down on the guest list following increased backlash directed at the amount of influencers and reality TV stars who had mm. attended in oh. prior years. Oh wow. The Costume Institute's 2023 exhibit, Karl Lagerfeld, A Line of Beauty, examines the designer's work over the course of his career, all the way from his humble beginnings as a freelancer in the 1950s to his final collection for Chanel in 2019, as well as his creative process. Although the German-born designer is largely remembered for his time at Chanel, where he effectively reinvigorated public interest in the brand following years of declining sales and reception, Lagerfeld also designed for prominent fashion houses including Jean Patou, Balmain, Chloe, Fendi, and his namesake label, Karl Lagerfeld. Keeping in line with the exhibit, the dress code for the Met Gala was announced as In Honor of Carl, with this year's celebrity co-chairs including Michaela Cole, Penelope Cruz, Roger Federer, and Dua Lipa. The brands that are sponsoring the event include Chanel, Fendi, and Karl Lagerfeld, so obviously there's an implicit expectation that celebrities will be mm. wearing those brands. Since the theme was first announced, it's attracted criticism, in large part because of Lagerfeld himself whose legacy was nearly eclipsed by his numerous controversies, which ranged from fatphobic comments that were directly influenced by his own negative body image, to editorials that featured models in blackface and yellowface, to frequent dismissal of the Me Too movement and feminist issues. Oh wow. If you want a really in-depth look at Lagerfeld's life, especially his design history and controversies, I'd highly recommend checking out this video by Understitch. Hmm. Unlike some of the Met Gala's successful past themes like 2018's Heavenly Bodies or 2015's China Through the Looking Glass, Karl Lagerfeld, A Line of Beauty, doesn't leave much room for interpretation, essentially setting up attendees to show up in Archive Chanel and call it a day. Yeah, it's like you just gotta show up on what he's With the house like, of yeah, Chanel, like what he's known for. It's not like a Met broader Gala. thing. I can't help but find this year's theme rather derivative, which I suppose I shouldn't be too surprised by considering the current state of American Vogue. Oh, what's going Since on Lagerfeld's Vogue? passing in 2019, several other notable figures in the fashion world have died, including Thierry Mugler, Vivian Westwood, Andre Leon Talley, Issey Miyake, Pierre Cardin, Kenzo Takata, Mary Quant, Virgil Abloh, and many, many more. Because there were so many deaths in such little time, I feel as though an in-memoriam theme would not only have allowed for interesting interpretations, but also highlighted the work yeah, of other fashion did, figures yeah, they who did also like a, deserve attention. Yeah, more than if one. there was a sort of memento mori meets memento vivere type of theme, attendees could have worn morning attire, clothing from specific deceased designers, or outfits that highlight how appreciative they are of life. Considering how large of an impact COVID had on both society and the fashion industry, that theme could also be incredibly relevant for today. Now that you've gotten some insight into the theme <laughs> of the yeah, evening, 
let's actually talk about what people wore at the 2023 Met Gala, okay. whether or not they were on theme, their inspirations, and my overall thoughts on their outfits. Keep in mind that hundreds of people attended this event, so obviously I can't talk about everybody. So my apologies if I missed your favorite celebrity. But you can always tweet me at Modern Girls and I can try to respond there. Unless I'm referring to someone specifically by name, think of this oh, video as no, a general no, critique. No, that's not, so some of my statements may not be like true this. for everyone <laughs> who attended the gala. Also, it yeah, must be Naomi. said that this is about the clothes, not the people. Anyway, let's get into it. First things first, we have to talk about the carpet itself. For the Met Gala, the carpet and the surrounding area are decorated Do to somewhat match the, the theme, carpet? but I'm completely baffled by the choices made this year. <laughs> the Baroque-inspired backdrop makes sense considering it was a period of time that Lagerfeld drew significant inspiration from, but it clashes terribly with the press divider, chandeliers, and most noticeably, the Yeah, carpet. that red and blue does not I have no well. idea why they went with red and blue lines everywhere, because yeah. it looks like toothpaste, and it isn't at all something I'd associate with Karl Lagerfeld. I feel like white with black and gray accents, or even an all-out black carpet would have been far more fitting. Not to mention, it wouldn't have been half as distracting in photos. Lagerfeld was known for creating elaborate sets for his runway shows, ranging from indoor beaches what to the grocery hell? stores what to the hell? forests, and I feel like the Met Gala could have taken any one God, of those shows damn. and used them as inspiration. As we already mentioned, Karl Lagerfeld designed for numerous brands over the course of his career, and unsurprisingly, many of his past works wound up making appearances at the Met Gala. Some people were incredibly straightforward, simply plucking archive pieces from the vault without any attempt to make them their own, including Maude Apatow, Vanessa Kirby, Naomi Campbell, Margot Robbie, Lila Moss, and Margaret Qualley. So many people wound up pulling from the archives with such little thought behind their choices, that Olivia Wilde and Margaret Jang even showed up in the same violin dress from Chloe 1983. But who do you think wore it best? Uh, even though I don't everyone like else fawned over me. her outfit, I personally <laughs> found Dua Lipa's look to be incredibly unimaginative. Previously worn by Claudia Schiffer, who received the coveted honor of being a Chanel bride over a dozen times, the dress is from the 1992 Chanel Haute Couture collection, where it was styled with a cropped jacket and hat. Dua Lipa is a pretty girl, and it's a pretty dress, yeah, it's but the styling of this then. outfit left a lot to be desired, especially in regard to her hair, accessories, and shoes, which is actually my complaint about a lot of the attendees. You should be dressed up from head to toe, not shoulder to ankle. Mm. It's kind of become a recurring joke at this point, but seriously, where were the necklaces? Lagerfeld was literally hated by Chanel's customers when he first took over for the brand because he over-accessorized. Everyone at the Met Gala should have been going all out with costume jewelry. Nicole Kidman was one of many who wore Chanel, but at least her look had some deeper meaning. It happened to be the dress that she wore for her first commercial for Chanel No. 5 back in 2004, although I'll admit that I found the styling to be a bit boring. Giselle Bunchen wore a dress from Chanel Spring-Summer 2007 which she'd previously been photographed wearing for Harper's Bazaar Korea by Lagerfeld himself. I was most impressed with the people who wore non-Lagerfeld designs while still capturing the essence of his work. This is perhaps best epitomized by Anne Hathaway's custom mm. Versace number. Skin tight That's with good. cutouts and the brand's signature safety pins, the dress is immediately recognizable as Versace. Damn, Anne Hathaway is aging beautiful. Pearl accents and flowers yeah. on the bust make it Chanel inspiration. This is very obvious. different too, and it's in terms of the videos that we normally <laughs> Rachel Brosnahan did something similar in Sergio Hudson, with her black sheer dress with strategic sequins paying homage to Chloe 1992. Liu Wen's Tory Burch dress, while simple, was also reminiscent of Chanel thanks to the camellia flowers on the dress's hem, although I did feel as though she was in desperate need of a necklace. Ashley Graham wore a designer by Harris Reed, which took inspiration mm, from Chanel Couture Fall-Winter 1987. Elle Fanning wore bespoke Vivian Westwood. Damn, where has she been there? Not only referencing Karl Lagerfeld's famous Chanel brides, but I also the first time that she and the designer at? met. Speaking of Chanel brides, there were multiple white dresses that were meant to pay homage to these iconic looks, but many of them lacked the over-the-top and playful element that Lagerfeld's runways were known for. Some, like Alexa Chung's and Rihanna's, did succeed in this, but I'm personally just not a big fan of what they wore. I did like Penelope Cruz's dress, though. Both Emma Chamberlain and Sydney Sweeney wore Miu Miu, but I personally wasn't a fan of either look. Emma had two outfits, one for walking the red carpet and the other for her interviewing segment. Another ode to Chanel, these two-piece sets both wind up looking tacky and cheap, in part because of their too casual styling, but also because of their ill fit. I especially hate the frayed bra hem. 
I don't care if it's a Mimi signature. If you're charging thousands of dollars for something, you should finish sewing it. Sydney Sweeney's is a touch better, but I felt as though it didn't I like the top part. I don't like what to get to I have when she's on the red carpet. Tom Brown dressed several celebrities for the Met Gala, yes. including Tiana Taylor, Jenna Ortega, Sora Choi, Janelle Monet, and Bella Ramsey. Although these looks were identifiable as Tom Brown because of their impeccable modern tailoring, it was also clear that they were a loving tribute to Lagerfeld's work. I also appreciated how each outfit was designed with the wearer in mind, resulting in no two looking yeah, alike. Like, yeah, like the only one those. I wound up disliking is Olivia Rodriguez, like and not because the dress yeah, wasn't like great, it. but because I found the styling to be so lackluster. Yeah, I don't know about My like favorites of the Brown it. Bunch were probably Tiana Taylor, Sora Choi, yeah, and Janelle Monae. Yeah. With the latter going a step further than the rest by wearing a vintage Chanel swimsuit and carrying a bag that paid homage to Lagerfeld's beloved cat, Choupette. Lagerfeld was gifted the animal back in 2011, and the two soon became inseparable, with Choupette being serving though? as inspiration for some of Lagerfeld's designs and <laughs> appearing in editorials. Uh -huh. At the Met Gala, there were several references to Choupette. Some were obvious than others. Chloe Feynman carried around a pink Judith Lieber cat purse as an ode to the fluffy feline. For her first Met Gala ever, Doja Cat wore a hooded Oscar de la Renta dress with ears and also donned prosthetics to give her face a more cat-like appearance. Jared Leto also wore a Choupette-inspired outfit, <laughs> essentially becoming the party's mascot. And although I preferred Doja's as it was a less literal interpretation, I do think it's funny that every single Met Gala, Jared Leto decides to pull off some ridiculous gimmick. Men are usually the weakest links at the Met Gala, showing up in uninspired suits that could be worn at practically any formal event. But this year was an exception. While some bland suits did wind up making an appearance at the 2023 Met Gala, a surprising amount of men actually had fun with their clothing for the evening, mm. to the point where they were actually giving the women a run for their money. Some of my favorites included Bad Bunny and Custom Jacques Moose, Diddy in one of his own couture designs, Shy Gildas Alexander yeah, in Tom Brown, and Alton Mason in Karl Lagerfeld. Although I can appreciate that Little Nas X was open to experimenting with his bold silver like look, this. I personally think that he missed this year's theme entirely, and as such, I just don't really care for it. Cardi B had not one, not two, but three looks during the Met Gala. She wore the first as she was leaving her hotel, bamboozling the entire internet into thinking that that was her outfit for the red carpet. But she later swapped the pink gown for a dress that featured large rosettes and like stiff collar, mm -hmm. and combined yeah. with her gray hair, it was a clear ode to Lagerfeld's personal style. Later on in the evening, she also changed into a fitted houndstooth dress, which was honestly better than half of the other attendees' outfits. Much like his predecessor, Coco Chanel, throughout his career, Lagerfeld sported a signature look that was instantly recognizable, to the point that it was even used on merchandise and was worn by celebrities on oh, Halloween. Wow. For several decades, Lagerfeld wore large black sunglasses, fingerless gloves, suit jackets, and high collars, and would also tie his long hair into a ponytail. The look encapsulated Lagerfeld's design sensibilities, featuring classic well-tailored pieces, <laughs> hints of Rococo aristocratic elegance, and edgy accessories for a contemporary twist. As I initially predicted, multiple celebrities dressed up in a similar fashion as Lagerfeld, with some being more literal and others more experimental although almost all added a necktie and some leather gloves. Besides tweed, bows, rosettes, and neckties, another frequent right, motif Tim. on the Met Gala red carpet were pearls, which are a staple of the House of Chanel. Although Lagerfeld did use pearls, I personally associate him with thick, chunky chains and fake stones far more, and I'm generally surprised that we didn't see those make their way onto more outfits. The only one who came close to being appropriately blinged out, in my opinion, was Michaela Cole, who wore custom scaparelli. Yeah, this look good. I like this dress. What's even worse than an ugly outfit is one that is totally yeah, not... unmemorable. And there were a good deal of those. Although many of these outfits were technically on theme, the from, um, it was such a surface level approach to it that I don't yeah, even yeah. think they deserve any credit for doing the bare minimum. Besides the outfits I've already talked about, some of my favorites of the evening were Gigi Hadid and Givenchy, Billie Eilish and Simone Rocha, Ava like Max that. and Christian Siriano, like and that. Paris Hilton and Marc Jacobs. My overall thoughts on the rather monochromatic evening is that unlike past Met Galas, most people were successful when it came to dressing on theme. All right, so we're going to end it right there. Um, pretty, um, pretty like a, a very different video than what we've done from this channel before. But, you know, we got to switch it up sometimes. So that's, that's good. I don't know much about the Met Gala before this and I just always knew that they showed up with themes but I didn't know like how the themes were created why the themes were created and like you know just the whole the, the step by step on how 
when this first announced what the theme is to the actual celebrities on the red carpet. So it was cool to kind of get um, more behind the scenes of what, um, like how the process is and how things are chosen. Um, and then um, the type of inspiration that these celebrities and these designers go from based on the chosen theme. Um, so that was really cool. Yeah, I, it, it definitely is different. Um, and I think it is interesting to just like see the theme and I guess like everybody's interpretation. And I agree that this theme, not bad, but it wasn't great. Like, I think I've, I always think back to the camp theme and it was like, oh, you watch the people that really did awful and then the people that really did good, where yeah. this is kind of just like, oh, let's pay homage to this one specific fashion design. I think the category just was too, it wasn't broad enough. Like it was just too specific. Yeah. yeah. It's not like just be like camp or like yeah. summer it, or something. I feel like it needed to be a bigger category. It was still some weird, really good fashion though I think yeah, yeah, from what I've sure. seen I'm not like a fashionista you know I'm not an expert yeah. but I do have eyes and I know what I like some stuff I like so, yeah. some stuff I like but anyway that's all for this reaction if you like it make sure you give it a thumbs up also comment down below what you thought about this reaction and make sure to subscribe to this channel and subscribe to our second channel for TV commentary uh, shout out to Modern Girls this is a very insightful video anyway that's all for this reaction and we're out bye, bye.